Hey guys, Dave, NC Picker, in the house. How's it going? Hope you guys are having an amazing day. It is Friday, so TGIF. Uh, well, it's Friday for you. It's Thursday night for me. Let me move this table out of the way. You know, it's funny because I pulled and packed my orders, what was that, Tuesday night? It's now Thursday night. And Tuesday night, I pulled and packed them. I put the labels on them. I weighed them. I did all that stuff, and I never actually put them out on Wednesday. So they never got picked up. So we had to run to the post office today, and all of our orders were one day late, which is frustrating. But we have a bunch of new orders, so let's take a look at what we got. Let me see here. We have, I haven't even looked, nine orders, so hmm, a little bit of a slowdown again. Tina's still been listing a bunch. I think she said she listed 20 yesterday and 10 today. But then again, Saturday I'd listed 50, and together we had listed like 35 Sunday, so that was like 80 listings. We had 19 sales on, or 15 sales on Sunday, and then 19 on Tuesday. I think mostly as a result of all that listing. And now this is the, uh, this is, this is actually kind of funny, but what I just noticed. And so this is just basically like, see, I mean, I guess it's just directly correlated how much you list and how much you ship. So that's good to know. Now this order from last, uh, last video, I have not shipped yet. <laughs> Pretty bad, but I went and I looked and I had time anyways. So this is uh, this little, it almost looks like Metal Gear, but it's like uh, Dragon Ball, I think, or his name is Kakashi. And it's a key ring. I think it's from Naruto, actually. And last video, I had sold two for $5 a piece. I re reached out to the customer and the customer said, you know what? No big deal. Go ahead and cancel one and just fulfill the one you have. And so that's what I was supposed to do. And I haven't done it yet. But when I look on here, it says that it's not shipping till Friday the 20th anyways. So based on when they order, they must have ordered, I don't know, Tuesday night or something. Because I don't need to ship it till tomorrow anyway. So I'm good. Let me see if there's any. See, none are actually late. I have three day shipping, three day handling still on my store, which is helping. I did get a, um... <laughs> I got a dropship order. So you usually know you get a dropship order because they'll message you and be like, hey, please no receipt. Please send me a tracking number so I can write my customer, blah, 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 blah. Well, I just wanted to show you the name of the company because I'm a child and a very mature. It's uh, Poo's Supplies. <laughs> I know, I'm a kid. Uh, it might actually be zeros. I'm not sure it's O's, but you know, young Dave thought it was pretty funny. Uh, so yeah, let's pull that first. FL4, which will be right here. Yeah, right here. So pull that, and it is what? Oh, it's, oh man, I've had this forever. I remember when I found it, I was all excited because it looked like it sold for like $70 and I had paid like five for it. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty awesome score. And since then it's been listed for probably a year with no action at all. And this is a very important lesson that just because there's a sold comp. Oh, I only paid $1. That makes me feel a little better. I thought I paid five. So I paid $1 for this, sold it for 30. This is a business card reader. Basically, you put your business card in it or someone's business card and it'll scan it and, you know, get it onto your computer. And I think it also has software that will like automatically import the name and all the contact fields into a spreadsheet for you without you having to type it all in, which is pretty nice. As you guys know, I always go to these trade shows and at the trade shows, you end up leaving with like 100 business cards in your pocket. So it's really nice to have something. What is this? A CD? A DVD? Yeah, I sold a DVD out of FL72. I don't I don't know what that is. Oh, I think I listed this just the other day. Did, nice. And it sold for $17.10. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's always rewarding. I haven't done hardly any listing in the last couple days and I'm supposed to be the one that's listing every single day. I have been slacking and that's not good because it's a bad habit to get into. So this is what sold, Unico, double feature. It's about some sort of unicorn that uh, is a superhero, kind of cool. Sold for $17.10. So I am thinking of slowing down a little on the NC Picker videos. And what I mean by that is just make a little less of them. Not less of them, but just less frequent. FL67, I sold some. Because I really, it's hard to keep up at this pace. Uh, I had been doing one every other day, right? A, a video pick-in every other day. And when you do that, you basically have to source every single weekend with no breaks. And if it rains, then all of a sudden you're super stressed because, oh no, it's gonna rain and I have no videos and I need three for next week or four for next week, depending on the week. So I think I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I talked to Kevin, the Commonwealth Picker, and he said he doesn't even think it matters if you do one every other day. He doesn't do them every other day. He used to be like that, but he said he slowed down and it was fine. So I think I'm gonna finally take my, my foot off the gas a little 
and maybe even drop to two a week, which will just give me a little bit more time with the family and a little less time in front of a computer editing, a little less time sourcing maybe two. So I think that's gonna be good for my mental health. And uh, so yeah, I think two a week is still a good amount of videos though. I sold Guitar Hero PS2, and what did I sell that for? Only six bucks, so that one's not very good. Got that at the flea market though. I think I paid less than a buck a game. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll try it for a little while and see what happens. I also have all this travel coming up, so I think it's gonna be good for my sanity to just not count on doing three or four videos a week and just be good with doing two, uh, at least for, you know, next couple of weeks. Because this week, it, I'm in that same situation where I'm like out of videos, but, I can't yard sale probably this weekend because it's supposed to rain all weekend. So I can't really get more footage. So what am I supposed to do? Now I have a few things that I can edit that I haven't edited yet, like the flea market this last weekend. But uh, I do not have a ton. I sold the Blade Quadrilogy. I don't know why. I like weirdly liked these movies back in the day. I should go watch one. I mean, it's kind of a good deal though. Four movies for five bucks. That's a deal. I mean, honestly, I could have kept it for that price. But I don't need more stuff, and that is without a doubt true. But look at this shelf, guys. We're starting to make progress. This whole thing was completely full. There's actually some gaps now, because Tina comes out here and she pulls a whole bin and she lifts it. And down here, there's some emptiness, right? This this whole Tupperware used to be full. So we are definitely making progress on listing. We're gonna keep going. Um, update on the storage unit, too. I'll put up some pictures here. We've got the floor painted in there. It's a storage container, a shipping container out at my dad's shop. We've got the floor now painted. And on top of that, my dad is actively installing an AC unit and there's already a dehumidifier in there. Is it a humidifier or a de I think it's dehumidifier. So I think that's really good. Once the AC is installed, I'm gonna order some shelving like this and I'm gonna put it into the unit and then I'm gonna unload all my stuff that's kind of in his shop and in his unit into that AC unit and we will have a really nice storage spot. And I will have to go out there sometime with the camera and uh, I can kind of show you what's going on out there, but I think it's gonna really be nice to just have all that space for stuff that I can kind of bring in and list as needed. Now, right now we're focusing on listing the stuff in the garage, but at, at some point we're gonna catch up, especially if I have some more time to list and then we're gonna need to bring the inventory from the shop here. And so that's kind of the future goal for the reselling business. I'm actually really excited about this next sale just because it was like such a rare, not rare, but just, what's the word I'm looking for? It was such like a uh, stupid find, <laughs> really. I can't think, think of another way to say it other than it was kind of stupid. Like there wasn't anything at this sale, right? I, I run into all these sales where there's not, nothing good. And I get to this one, I'm like, oh man, another sale with pretty much nothing good. And I'm looking and looking and looking and I find a couple of random things in a quarter box. And then I find this thing, which I think was also a quarter. And it's just a remote control for a fan, a Lasco fan, L-A-S-C-K-O. Uh, and it's just a remote that you control your fan with. And I paid a quarter for it and I sold it for 17 bucks two days after I listed. So I thought that was cool that I was able to turn that yard sale into $17, even though there really wasn't anything else of value as far as I could tell. Okay, and yeah, I wanted to thank you guys for all the responses to last uh, video's questions. So first of all, uh, pretty much everyone said they would do a partial refund to that hair dye purchase. Someone bought like, six things a hair dye and paid $35 for shipping. Shipping was actually like 15. And so I ended up doing a refund for I think $16 for them. But yeah, everyone else agreed since it's the same item, multi-quantity, eBay just doesn't know how to calculate that properly. So it's just kind of nice to, to do a refund if you can swing it. And I did that. And so that was cool. Additionally, we talked a lot about USPS's rates and the fact that, you know, you have to pay more for shipping than the item. Uh, I had some really cool responses to that. So one person had said that they do free shipping and their method to do free shipping is they always just add a 30% adder to whatever the comps are with shipping. So like if all the sold comps, correct me if I'm wrong, viewer who said this, but of all the sold comps for 127 hours, well, that's a bad example because, well, anyways, we'll say it anyways. All the comps for 127 hours it are... 10 bucks, you're gonna list it for 10 bucks. Uh, you add $3, is that how it works? <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if that's really how it works, but it seemed like he was saying he would just add a 30% adder to his listings and that's gonna cover shipping. But I guess it wouldn't really work with first class anymore because if it's first class gonna ship for $4, 
And if it's a ten, and if what if it's a five dollar? I, I don't know. Maybe I don't really understand that. Explain that in more detail down below. Uh, I want to know your methods, guys. Those of you who do free shipping on all your stuff you sell, what is your cheat, <laughs> your hack, your life hack to actually make sure you don't accidentally screw yourself over by undercharging for shipping? Is there something you do to ensure that or not? Uh, I sold Blade, the Blade of the Immortal. It's an anime. DVD, brand new seal, a lot of DVDs, but that's what Tina's listing right now, so it makes sense. And that sold for $4.80, so not a really good one. And then I sold another one, it's a VHS slot in FL73, Tenshi. Tenshi, I just saw this, I think. So when I had mixed opinions, here, Tenshi, this three VHSs sold for $12. Uh, this is what they look like. So I had um, a mixed kind of bag when it came to this whole idea of uh, doing like retail shipping charge versus uh, discounted rate. So apparently eBay does allow you to change what your customer gets charged. So by default, a customer gets charged what they would get charged if they went to USPS and checked out there. And so that's why you're seeing first class items be like 518. And then when I actually go to print the label, it's only 382. So they're not getting that discounted rate. And so you can pass that on to them which I'm tempted to try because it'll make me more competitive. But a lot of people said, hey, you know, that can help pay for packing supplies and this and that and this and that. So there's a lot of reasons you might want to keep it like that. Okay, so I just Googled. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So I just typed it into Google and it says on the manage shipping settings, go to edit. So here, let me show you the manage this here, manage shipping settings. And apparently you can click edit. No, it's not there. Let me look at my comments. Maybe I can find it in there. I'm confused. Like Walter said, Dave, yes, you can change the shipping, but you shouldn't considering the cost of the package, mailers, box, fees, charge on shipping. I normally do send a partial refund if they buy multiple items. Hey, Cabin Vibe Etsy store was a new subscriber and they liked. Thank you, Cabin Vibe. We <laughs> got like 10 hack messages about crypto coin. Yeah, a lot of people were mad about the gutters too, and I'm still not getting a response from the gutter company. Uh, I messaged them Monday they said they'd send someone out to fix my gutters, and they still haven't. If someone wants to help me out and just let me know how to change it to the non-default shipping, and I thought someone said it, and I just can't find the comment right now. Sometimes it's hard to find them. But yeah, I just, I can't figure that out right now. But I will say this, the gutter, so my gutter is all messed up. It's leaking, and I messaged them like six times. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The first time I messaged them, they said they'd send someone over in all caps. We'll send someone over, right? Then they stopped responding. They haven't responded at all since then. It is now Thursday. And so, and I've continuously texted them and I've even called them on my cell phone several times with no answer. And so today I called them on a different phone number, kind of to see if they were screening my call and they picked right up. <laughs> so that's not a good sign. And they basically, she's like, I've been getting your messages. I just haven't haven't messaged you back because it's just, we're so packed right now. I don't know if I can fit you in the schedule. We uh, fired the guy who did your, your gutters, which, okay, I wonder if that's my fault. Um, I would hope not, but maybe. I mean, he didn't do a very good job, so maybe that is what happened. Anyways, so she said she'd get back to me when she had a time they could do it. I have no idea when that'll be, but we have a bunch of storms coming up this weekend, so that should be interesting. Thinking like an economist, a guide to rational decision-making... This is one of those great courses DVDs with booklets, and it sold for, I think, $8 plus shipping. So I, uh, I requested the time off. So I've got two things coming up. I think I've told you guys this. The 127-mile yard sale, is that what it's called? The 127 sale? I don't know. Kevin the Commonwealth Picker wants me to go. So I'm going to that, and that's in early August. And then I'm also going to FlipCon with Harry Tornado. Oh, Harry Tornado is hosting it. We're not going together. That would be cute, though. So all these items I just pulled, total uh, sale was $161.71. Not huge money, but definitely a nice little little side hustle day. Uh, and shipping, I think, said it was going to be 40 bucks, So that's 120 And then fees would be 16 24 24 off the 100 Yeah, so like 100 bucks. 100 bucks in a day. Hey, that's not bad. 100 bucks for a day of work. But it's not a full day. I mean, I listed this, and I'll probably spend 20 minutes packing this max. Listen to an audiobook while I do it. I do like audiobooks. What's your guys' recommendations for a good sci-fi audiobook? If I like, or fantasy, right? Like, I like Name of the Wind. I like Red Rising. Oof. Let me tell you. Someone actually, I think Dollar Beals, y'all, 
listened to Name of the Wind at my recommendation and loved it because it's amazing. But Red Rising is really up there if you like that kind of sci-fi fantasy. He's basically on Mars, and yeah, you'll just Red Rising by hmm, I don't know even who wrote it, but it's amazing. Uh, I should get like a Audible link so you guys can click my link. I wonder if that's something I could do. <laughs> If I could, wait, oh, see, this doesn't look right. Stone Mayor? Who, who, oh, Pierce Brown is the author. It's this one here. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This book is amazing. Um, if you like, think like, let me think. How can I describe it? It's like Hunger Games and Star Trek combined. Pretty cool. But yeah, so me and Kevin and Carrie are all going to stay together, hopefully, at an Airbnb. Eh, we don't know yet. We haven't nailed it down yet, but at some point... Uh, during the 127, we'll all be together and maybe do a live Trash to Cash. So that should be fun, hopefully. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this episode. A short one, not that many orders, and I got a ton to do tonight. Thank you guys for stopping in. Make sure you come back again next time so we can pull some more eBay orders and hang out a little longer.